guess everything that happened yesterday wasn't just a dream then. Well, it's time for our next fairy tale adventure. We should head to the station Grandpa Almond told us about. Get up, said Jewel. Time to get to work, you lazy bones. Oh, oh, oh I can't, uh, can't remember how to call the train. Just let me sleep a little longer, and I'm sure I'll remember. Don't try to pull one over on me, young man. Your fading disorder has been cured. I saw you chugging cup after cup of magic tonic in the tavern last night. Uh, you must be mistaken, Grandpa Alman. That guy definitely wasn't me. Oh, you remember my name now, do you? Then it seems like you're all better. You had no idea who I was when you were fading. Now, enough of your nonsense. Get up. The fairy and her friends are going to be here any second. All right. I'm up. I'm up. The Maritime Express should be here soon. <laughs> That's more like it. Ah, lie there any longer and you'll start gathering dust. Uh, is everything okay? The hero, his pixie companion, and the forest fairy. Oh, I, I didn't know you were already here. Oh, merciful macadamias. I I'm sorry you had to see that. Oh, it's all right. Paimon knows the feeling. Who doesn't want to sleep in first thing in the morning? Does the Maritime Express run out of Constellation Metropole? Uh, yes. E each train needs a conductor to operate, and the conductors are always from the capital. The more difficult maneuvers are a little too complicated when you're made of paper. Oh, so you mean the people of Constellation Metropole aren't origami animals like you? Well, the, the city welcomes visitors from all over the world, so you're bound to run into some forest dwellers there. But yes, generally speaking, the residents of Constellation Metropole look quite different from us. Ah, you'll see for yourself soon enough. Here comes the train. Pleasure to meet you, everyone. My name is Will, and I'll be the conductor for your journey today. I'm assuming you're the ones who called the train. Whoa, it's a little toy man. Yes, we, we called the train. The hero and the forest fairy need a ride to Constellation Metropole. The, the hero and the forest fairy? The ones from the prophecy? Oh, why didn't you say so earlier? We could have prepared a far more luxurious train. I'll just go back and get a better one. That's okay, Mr. Wheel. We're trying to get to the city as fast as possible. We just need you to get us across the sea. In your capable hands, I'm sure we'll get there in no time. Of course, my lady. It would be an honor. Well then, all aboard, sit anywhere you like. We'll get a stunning view of Simulanka no matter where you're seated. <sighs> oh, breakfast. Did one of you just say something? Wasn't me either. Uh, breakfast. Um, oh, come back. Hmm. Sounds like the voice is coming from inside the train. <sighs> oh, fish. Chicken drumsticks. I'll got ya. What the? What's Kirara doing here? Is she a friend of yours? Oh, let Paimon introduce you. This is Kirara. She's... Oh, wait, actually, maybe we should wake her up first. So noisy. I is it morning already? Oh, morning? Huh? 
Huh? Traveler! Paimon! I it's you? Which means... Oh, thank goodness. It was all a dream after all. <laughs> oh, gotta hand it to my imagination. It all felt super real. There were these toy people, but they were alive and they could talk. Ahem. <clears throat> Madam, sleeping overnight in the train car is prohibited. Uh, it, it wasn't just a dream? It's all right, Kirara. Apparently we're in a world called Simulanka. We got here yesterday, too. Simulanka? So, that's what it's called. I spent all day yesterday wandering around this one city. Uh, the toy people called it Constellation Metropole. I was trying to find a way to get back home. <sighs> I was seriously starting to think I'd gotten on the bad side of some great yokai and gotten swallowed whole. Huh. I take it you're Inazuman then, Miss Kirara? She sure is. But, uh, Kirara here is kind of special. Let Paimon introduce you for real this time. Kirara is a Nekomata from Inazuma. She works as a courier for Komania Express. Huh, nice to meet you. I'm Nilu, a member of Zubair Theater. You can usually find us performing in Sumeru City's Grand Bazaar. Right now, though, I suppose I should introduce myself as the Fairy of the Forest of Blessings. Oh, you're Nilu! I've heard a lot about you from my deliveries in Sumeru. I even saw one of your performances back in the day. You're an amazing dancer. But, uh, did you say you were a... Forest fairy? Oh, yeah, that's her new identity here in Simulanka. Oh, speaking of new identities, looks like you got a new outfit yourself, Kirara! Yeah, I know! It confused the heck out of me yesterday. I just woke up in a set of brand new clothes I'd never seen before. That must mean you have a big part to play here, too! Is... is that a thing? I guess I am wearing a pair of boots, but still. Did you by any chance hear a voice speaking to you before you got here, Miss Kirara? A voice... Oh, yeah, I did hear something! But I was so freaked out my tails got all tangled, so I, uh... <laughs> didn't catch much of what was said. <laughs> s s sorry for the interruption. But this, uh, Nekomata friend of yours, she doesn't eat hamsters, does she? Or frogs? Oh, no need to worry, little guys. I would never do something like that. Well, unless I'd been out in the wild too long without anything to eat. Oh, speaking of eating, I am getting a little hungry. <clears throat> Where are your manners, everyone? Uh, this young lady is a trusted friend of our esteemed hero. Now, I know a fear of felines is etched into us with ink, but I'm certain Miss Nekomata in boots here means us no harm. It sure looks like you're keeping your distance, though, Grandpa Almond. You will have nothing to fear, I promise. I met some origami animals in Constellation Metropole yesterday, and I even made sure to retract my claws so I didn't hurt them by accident. Plus, you all look just about as tasty as the cardboard boxes I deliver. <laughs> uh, not that I'd try to eat you even if you did look tasty. Uh, promise. Please excuse us, Mom. Uh, it's just an unconscious reaction. <clears throat> Dear passengers, it's almost time for us to depart. Oh, yeah, that. Whoops. This turned into a pretty long conversation, didn't it? All right, let's get on the train! You coming with us, Kirara? Mm-hmm. I'll ride with you to the next stop. There's a place near the Metropole that caught my eye yesterday, so I want to go explore it today. Then all that remains for me to say is, on behalf of the Forest of Blessings, thank you once again for all you've done for us. May the goddess of fate be with you and bless your journey. Madam Fairy, Miss Nekomata in boots, and our brave heroes. Please do visit us in the Forest of Blessings again. 
once peace has returned to this land. We will. We'll definitely meet again. Take care, Grandpa Almond. Safe trip! Wow! A train ride over the sea? What an incredible view! Please keep your head and arms inside the train at all times. We don't want anyone falling into the sea. There's a train coming the other way, too! Now that the fading disorder is cured, I'm sure the forest will be a lively place again in no time. I gotta go explore that forest at some point. It looked so pretty from the train. I just hope they, uh, won't be too scared of me. We'll be arriving at our destination shortly. Please prepare to disembark. Here we are! Constellation Metropole is right over there. It's a short walk from here to the Gear Sky Ladder, which will take you right to Metropole Square. And thank you again for choosing Maritime Express. Great! And thanks to you for a smooth and pleasant journey, Mr. Wheel. The train cars were comfortable and spacious, and I had a great night's sleep. I'll definitely be back. Um, as you wish, ma'am. place you wanted to check out nearby? Mm-hmm. I took a walk around yesterday, and it felt like there was something... weird about it. So, I think I'll indulge my curiosity and go investigate. Want us to come with you? It's okay. You guys go ahead and visit the Metropole for now. Hopefully, that's where you'll be able to find out some more about this world. I pretty much explored the whole place from the rooftops yesterday, but for some reason, this is the place that caught my attention. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Like, when you get a stone stuck in your claw or something, it keeps nagging at you to dig it out, but you can't focus on anything else until you do. Don't worry, if you run into any trouble, I'll be there faster than you can say Gold Level Courier of the Comania Express. Okay, fair enough. We'll head to the Metropole then. Guess this is where we say bye for now. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about me. Let's not forget, I'm a yokai. Hey, are you guys already finished with everything in the Metropole? No need to prioritize me. Uh, there's just this place I really want to go check out. Feel free to get back to me once you've got everything sorted out. Sure. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Help me! Somebody! Wait. Help me! Help! Oh, goddess of prophecy above, would you kind souls please help us? What happened here? Why are you all suspended in midair? I mean... Being stuck in midair still beats falling to the ground and being smashed into a pile of blocks, but... <sighs> I told him to be careful, but... No. Never mind. Now's not the time for that. My good friends, could I trouble you to turn the clockwork key over there? I'll explain everything in a bit. Oh, thank 
thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, what happened there? It almost seemed like we turned back time. I take it this is your first time witnessing the power of the Goddess of Prophecy, then? If so, I can see why you might think that. Basically, this is a gift bestowed upon Constellation Metropole by the Goddess of Prophecy, who rules over the natural course of all things. It helps those who have deviated from their proper path to get back on track. Proper path? Do you mean everything that happens in the Metropole has been planned out since the very beginning? Why are you saying that as if it's a bad thing? You're not explaining it clearly. Here, allow me. Of course, all the residents of the Metropole have the freedom to live their own lives. For instance, whether I use olive oil or sesame oil in my morning skincare routine is entirely my choice. But whenever something disastrous is about to happen, like when I almost got turned into a pile of rubble just now, the goddess's magic will activate in the world around us. So, in other words, it's kind of protection magic to keep people alive? You could say that. There are other situations in which it activates too, but that's basically correct. Well, in any case, we're glad no one's hurt. Are you heading to the Constellation Metropole? Yep. Do you know where we can find the Gear Sky Ladder? Oh, it's just that platform up ahead. The one with the key sticking out. Uh, that thing? Um, are you sure? Yep, that's the one. Pretty much everything in the Metropole runs on tracks and gears. The Goddess of Prophecy watches over it all. Which is to say, all the tracks are fixed. If a machine is set up to move forwards, it'll never move in reverse. This reminds Paimon a lot of Fontaine's clockwork toys. You mean, like those music boxes with dancing figures? I think I've seen one or two from the merchants in Sumeru. Yeah, exactly like that. Anyway, sounds like it's not gonna suddenly fall out of the sky, so Paimon's okay now. Should we get going? Next step is to get to the top of the Metropole, and ask the Goddess of Prophecy for guidance. If there is a king in that castle, I sure hope he won't get mad at us for trespassing. Sneaking into his castle. <laughs> Paimon hopes he's not mad. Silence! The one who shall soon stand before you is the ruler of Constellation Metropole. The one who descended after a meteor shower. And the protector of order and all the stars in the sky. That's a long list of titles. I bid ye welcome, guests from afar. Long have I heard of your grand deeds. O oh, fairy, who restored the lifeblood of the forest. O oh, hero, who... Uh, uh, huh? Nadia! Hold your foul tongue! How dare you utter Her Majesty's name! <laughs> nice one, partner. Spectacular improvisation skills. I'd expect no less from you. All right, all right. You can relax now. Allow me to make some introductions. This is the Traveler and his trusty companion, Paimon. You are personal friends with Her Majesty the King? Please, forgive our grievous mistake. We had no idea. <clears throat> all right. The welcome ceremony is over. Everyone back to your stations. I will personally treat our guests to some royal hospitality. Yes, your majesty. Oh, 
come on, I've already sent them off. So, anyway, how did you guys get here? We were gonna ask you the same thing! Also, how are you already king of this nation? And where did you get a crown? Oh, wait, don't say it. You just woke up like this, right? Sounds like you've answered your own question. But before I woke up, I heard a voice say to me, You are the king of Constellation Metropole. Now go forth and save your city. A similar thing happened to me. Oh, yeah, sorry. You must be the fairy of the Forest of Blessings, right? Mm -hmm. This is Nilu, a friend that we made during our time in Sumeru. Nice to meet you, Miss Nilu. I'm Navia, the president of Spina di Rosula. If you ever get the chance to go to Fontaine, make sure you come and visit me. I'm based in Poisson. Seems like you're taking this all in stride. Aren't you nervous about getting stuck here and never being able to get back home? Why would I be worried about that? We've faced much bigger problems than this before, and we always pull through. This should be a piece of cake. Besides, life's always full of surprises. You gotta learn to just enjoy it. That sounds like a great outlook on life. You have a very optimistic spirit. Thanks, I'll take that. Honestly, though, it also puts me at ease to find out that you guys are the fairy and heroes that I've been hearing about in this prophecy. <laughs> We're kind of veterans at dealing with prophecies by now, aren't we? Uh, about that. Has anything bad happened in the Metropole? We heard about an evil dragon. Did it make a mess here, too? It sure did. Apparently, for whatever reason, he went for the stars above the city recently. Literally just flew up and started snatching them out of the sky. Luckily, the guards responded quickly and stopped the dragon from taking them back to his lair. Unfortunately, though, he dropped them before he flew off. Now they're scattered all around the Metropole. I've been out trying to retrieve them, but I only managed to get one of them before you showed up. Oh, I didn't ask yet. What brings you to the Metropole anyway? Oh, Paimon can explain! I see. So, you want to consult the Oracle of the Goddess of Prophecy. Do you know how we can do that, Miss Navia? Well, the Goddess's statue is indeed at the top of the castle. I can take you up there. However, I've heard from the citizens here that the Goddess hasn't given out any new revelations in a very long time. Really? But Grandpa Almon told us that he received his prophecy from the goddess. Oh, that's probably because the prophecy about the hero of Simulanka has been around for a very long time. But recently, people realized that the goddess didn't reveal anything about what's supposed to happen after peace has been restored. Huh. Okay. Still, can't hurt to try your luck. And maybe you can help me get rid of the invaders while we're at it. Invaders? So the dragon's not your only problem? Right. The forest isn't the only place where strange things have been happening to the residents. Have you come across the gift from the Goddess of Prophecy yet? You mean... the protection magic that stops them from coming to harm? We saw it in action. Yep, that's the one. Over the past little while, this magic has been triggering far more frequently. We don't know if it's simply because the Metropole has grown a lot more dangerous, or if there's a deeper reason behind it. Some residents find themselves getting stuck in a place and unable to move. Others start repeating the same thing over and over again, like they're trapped in some kind of loop. If we were to use clockwork toys as an analogy, could it be that the tracks have eroded, or the gears have slid out of place? That's exactly right, Nilu. That's basically what's happening. Anyway, some of the monsters outside the city saw this as an opportunity to launch an invasion. Uh, but we didn't see a single monster on our way here. That's because I already took care of most of them over the past couple of days. 
Of the remaining few, we trap some of them inside the castle and chase the rest back out of the city. Okay, so to summarize, not only has the magic here gotten all messed up, but the dragons also knocked some of the stars out of the sky, plus there's a bunch of monsters in the city. <sighs> Sounds like there's a lot more to fix here than in the Forest of Blessings. Well, defeating the dragon and the monster should be straightforward enough. But how do we fix the magic? Supposedly, the goddess has had it all planned out for ages. One of her oldest prophecies says this. Go and push the gear that connects up to the starry sky. When that time comes, I shall dance and return the tracks beneath my people's feet back to the stars in the sky. Huh? But weren't the tracks the gift that she gave to her people in the first place? Does that mean she plans to take the gift back? That's what the prophecy seems to be saying, yes. So, as a result, some people are against turning the gear, despite what the prophecy says, since they fear a future where they no longer enjoy the goddess's protection. But letting this drag on isn't the answer either, is it? No, and I think they know that. But they're just too afraid to take that final, terrifying step. They're still hoping there might be an alternative solution. Now, we could ignore their objections and go turn the gear ourselves. But... Exactly. You know me well. And that's why you're my partner. I want to get as many people on my side as possible. At the end of the day, this is their city. And they should have the right to decide its future. Spoken like a true wise king, Navia. I am the boss of Spina di Rosula, after all. This may be my first time as a king, but there are a few similarities between the two roles. Traveler, Paimon, Miss Nilu, would you be willing to lend me your support? With your help, I'm confident we'll be able to find the most frictionless way to resolve the problems plaguing this city. <laughs> Not gonna lie, your majesty is definitely growing on me. Seriously, like we'd ever say no? We're your friends! No need to ask us so formally in the future. I'm happy to help too. This is a beautiful city, and just like the Forest of Blessings, I would love to see it return to normal as soon as possible. Ah, great! As the king of Constellation Metropole, I extend to you my gratitude. All right, everyone, follow me. I'll show you the way to the goddess statue at the top of the Metropole. And stay close. You don't want to get lost in my castle. It's huge. Huh? What's this? Wait. This looks like the star I found earlier. I told the guards to place it near the goddess statue. Maybe they ran into some trouble up there. Guess we'd better hurry.
interesting trinkets for me. Right. Shower me with praise. <laughs> Sorry, pal. Right here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where do you want this stuff delivered to, boss? Is that all? Right now. Right here. Let the world fly! Tiny mythical beast! Where do you want this stuff delivered to, boss? Like they really didn't want to give that to us.
Surge, right here. A sight to behold. Another one in the bag! That chair was rough. Oh, cool. This stuff looks dope. I can't move! What happened? Your Majesty! This... conservative radical! He attacked us! He threw the star from the Astral Garden and even stole the magic thread linking the Oracle Pillars! But just as we were about to arrest him, the Goddess's magic activated. And now we can't move! No! Nobody touched the Celestial Gear! What's an Oracle Pillar? You need to use it to pray to the goddess. I'll explain later. First, let's help these guys. Okay, let him go. But, Your Majesty! Even if we catch up to him now, we won't be able to change his mind, much less quell the fear that many others like him are feeling. All it would do is turn him further against us. Understood, Your Majesty. Also, this is the magic thread he was holding from the Oracle Pillars. Your Majesty, what should we... Ah! Please give that to the Traveler over there. I believe they have some questions for the Goddess. Yes, Your Majesty. Um, so, what do we do with this exactly? See those Oracle Pillars over there? Just use the magic thread to connect them together in a specific pattern, and the Goddess of Prophecy will answer your prayers. Oh! Sounds easy enough. Let's give it a try.
To which course of fate do you seek answers, my child of Simulanka? The hero from another world, supported by their companions, shall restore peace to this world. Go and push the gear that connects up to the starry sky. When that time comes, I shall dance and return the tracks beneath my people's feet back to the stars in the sky. So, Miss Navia was right. The goddess of prophecy didn't tell us anything about the future. Fair enough. Guess we'll just have to play it by ear. Then first, we have to restore the sky back to its original state by putting the stars back in their positions. Let me do a quick count. All right. Adding in the ones we picked up on the way here, I think that's all of them. Let's go hang these stars back up in the sky. In the sky? Uh, how do we get up there? Oh, <laughs> I got us covered. We will, of course, be taking the Aerial Express. Is that a flying train? Hey, you already took a train that runs on water. Is a flying train really that much weirder? Well, at least the Maritime Express still runs on a track. Oh, come on, don't worry about it. This train has been blessed by the Goddess of Prophecy. Its whole purpose is to protect the Metropole skies. It took me a lot of effort to find it, you know. I don't think anyone's used it in, like, mm, a hundred years. A hundred years? Are you sure it's safe? Let's not forget that the Goddess of Prophecy's magic has been going haywire recently. Well, it's not like we have any other options. Unless you want to do the honors, Paimon. Fancy flying up there on your own? <laughs> no, thank you. It's way too high up. Oh, wait, Milu. You've got a feel for how magic works here. Can you do your thing and sense if this train is a real deal? I can try. Hmm. Yes, I can sense traces of magic. But it's different from the kind I felt in the forest, so... I don't know. Okay, fine. Guess there's only one way to find out. That's the spirit. I'll come with you. Miss Nilu, will you be joining us? I think I'll stay behind. That way, if something does go wrong, you'll have someone on the ground to get you some help. That makes sense. If the train does break down, you can make us a giant origami crane to come bail us out. Or if a crane's too difficult, a finch could work. <laughs> Best of luck! Hmm... A finch, huh? I think I know how to hold one of those. train before. Neither have we. That should do it. On to the next location. <laughs> So high up. 
hang in there, Paimon. The hard part's nearly over. After that, it's downhill all the way. Don't say downhill all the way! That is the last thing Paimon wants to hear! job it looked like it all went smoothly yeah and it was an absolute blast too you gotta ride with us next time miss nilu huh uh, i'm okay uh, thanks for halt what do you think you're doing get out of my way what's going on your majesty there let us through! Stay back! It's okay. Let them through. Tuh. Y your Majesty, could we please ask you not to turn the gear that connects up to the sky? And why is that? As you have seen, the goddess's gift is very important to us. It keeps us from harm and protects our very lives. Some of us, we just aren't ready to lose that protection. I see. I understand. Huh? Your Majesty, do you mean... I won't turn that gear. Not until you're ready. What? I've said before that the Metropole belongs to the people. And they should have the right to decide its future. <sighs> but let me ask you this. How do you plan to solve the issues we are currently facing? Well, we'll start by rescuing the people that have gotten stuck. And then we'll find a way to figure out the true cause of this crisis. And have you made any headway on that? The true cause, I mean. Unfortunately not. Hey, you little... I'm sorry, my friend, but it's the truth. You have friends and family that have been affected, don't you? That have gotten stuck? Duh. I understand your concerns. But if we let this drag on for much longer, the situation may well get worse. More and more people will be frozen by the goddess's magic. Yes, but if we turn that gear now, all the tracks in this city will disappear. I know this is a hard decision to make, but have you ever thought about why the goddess might have made things this way in the first place? Huh? Why do you think she might decide to take back her gift and stop revealing further prophecies about the future? Are you saying she has abandoned us? No, quite the opposite, in fact. What do you mean? The goddess dearly loves this world and all the people of Simulanka. And because she loves you so much, she wants you to be able to choose your own path. <sighs> Every parent hopes their child will have a happy and carefree life. But if they're overprotective, then all they'll manage to do is keep their child trapped. If a mother bird lets her baby ride on her wings for too long, her child will never learn how to fly. Perhaps the goddess of prophecy has always known that one day, she'll have to let go. Children can only become independent if they're allowed to form their own opinions, make their own decisions, and deal with the consequences on their own. Only then will they be able to continue their journey alone, even after their parents are gone. But we've relied on the goddess's protection for so long. We don't know what it's like to go it alone. We don't know if we have what it takes. Are you kidding me? I think you've proven yourselves more than capable of that. What do you mean? You made a call in a time of crisis. And you've come all this way to talk to me. Even the guards couldn't stop you. That must have taken a lot of courage. But 
We only did it because we were scared. Why you set out on the journey doesn't matter. What matters is that you've proven you can choose your own path. <sighs> My friend, I fear our king is right. It is time for us to face our fears. What? But... but we... We can't go on living like this. Living in fear. Look at what it's driven you to do. You threw away a star personally created by the goddess of prophecy herself. <laughs> you once revered her more than any of us. And I think the king is right. She hasn't abandoned us. So... Why don't we put our trust in her one more time? <sighs> I don't care anymore. Do what you want. Aw, he laughed. I'm sorry about my friend. That's just how he is. Always had a terrible temper. Please accept my apology for his impudent behavior. Is it just me, or... Has he accepted the goddess's prophecy? I think so. Not that you'll ever hear him admit it out loud. Your Majesty, please turn the gear that connects up to the sky. So, you've made up your mind? About giving up the Goddess's gift? Yes, I've made up my mind. But maybe losing the gift isn't what this is about anymore. Because we've gained something, too. You have given us courage. <laughs> well said. I am... Proud of your decision. Now, gather around, everyone, and join me as we make the night sky of this wonderful city turn once more. So the stars hanging in the sky, they're music notes! This entire metropole is a huge music box! That's incredible! <sighs> How do you feel? Uh, a little scared and uncertain. But for some reason, I feel a lot more at ease. It's as if some kind of huge weight has been lifted from my shoulders. Figured out any next steps? To be honest, not really. But maybe I can start by having a heart-to-heart -heart with that stubborn friend of mine. I have an idea. If you don't know what to do, why don't you start by helping the people around you? You mean the people who got stuck because of the goddess's magic? I mean anyone and everyone who needs your help. By helping others? You'll eventually find your own path. Trust me, I have experience in this. What kind of experience, Your Majesty? Hmm... Ah, uh, yes. We'll need a formal organization with a catchy name before we go out and start helping people. Why don't we call it... The Spina di Rosula? Spina... di Rosula? Ooh, or even the Spina di Rosula De Simulonka. Yeah, that's catchy. Wow, big expansion for the Spina. Moving into other worlds now. Spina di Rosula. <laughs> I like it. It's a great name. Let's do as your majesty suggests. Well then, how about I appoint you as the head of the Spina in Simulonka? While I'm off fighting the dragon with the other heroes, it'll be your responsibility to work with the guards and take good care of the people in the Metropole. What? You're planning on fighting the dragon? But no, Your Majesty, you must reconsider! He's right! Your Majesty, you can't! How are you two on the same side all of a sudden? 
Perhaps your majesty is unaware of this. The great dragon suddenly broke out from the Titanium Mines one day, and tore the end of the world to pieces. After that, it spat out a strange fog that surrounded a whole island. No one knows what lies beyond the fog, and no one knows what has become of that poor island. Before your majesty arrived, we dispatched many soldiers to fight the dragon, but none came back alive. Yikes. Sounds worse than we thought. Isn't that all the more reason for us to go? There could still be guards trapped there, waiting for someone to rescue them. King Navia is right. We cannot simply stand by and watch as the people of this world suffer. <sighs> very well. Though I have not served by your side for very long, your majesty. Two days is enough for me to have learned that once your mind is set, any attempts to change it are futile. <laughs> You're a pretty good judge of character. Um, he probably didn't mean that as a compliment. Since you're serious about this, I won't try and stop you. There's only one way to reach the end of the world, and that's by taking the Maritime Express. Oh, right! So there's a line going there too? Yes. It was originally built to serve the workers commuting to the Titanium Mines, but it has been abandoned since the Dragon Attack. I'll tell the conductor to wait for you at the platform by the side gate to the Metropole first thing tomorrow morning. You're embarking on an extremely dangerous adventure. Please be careful, your majesty and friends. Oh, thank you for your concern. While I'm gone, I leave the Metropole in your capable hands. Yes, yes your, your majesty. majesty. <laughs> Just call me boss from now on. That's what everyone in the Spina calls me, and it's what I'm used to. The plan for tomorrow is journey across the ocean, make it to the end of the world, and defeat a dragon. Ooh, that's an adventure and a half. Do all storybook heroes have to work this hard? At least we'll get to see some amazing scenery along the way, right? Besides, we'll have each other. It'll be a shared experience that we'll never forget. Plus, we're pretty well equipped for a classic Heroes vs. Dragon story. We got Miss Nilu as our magic caster, and I... I guess I'm the melee warrior who leads the charge? Paimon can definitely see that. Anyway, those are tomorrow's problems. Right now, all Paimon wants is to eat a proper meal, because worst case scenario, if Paimon ends up getting eaten by a dragon, she wants to do it on a full stomach. And something about the end of the world doesn't sound like a great place for food options. Hmm. Well, the origami animals in the forest only drink magic tonic. What do the toy people here in Constellation Metropole eat? Vegetable oil and sawdust, I think. 